and this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, he, John, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. So that's, that's our journey for today. Um, any, co any comments? Or uh, anything you want to throw out there for discussion? Now we got to remember this happens after 400 years of silence. No, no, prof no, 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 nothing from the Lord through through any prophet in this whole time. And now John is arising, and uh, the Lord's starting to talk to Israel again. You know what, what I, I like is when he says, I'm not worthy to even to untie his sandals. You know. I was thinking about that this afternoon because because usually when 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 you had somebody into your house, the servants would wash the feet, you know. And John didn't even think he was worthy to be a servant mm -hmm. of the Lord in that regard. I was thinking about that today. You know? I was laying down just pondering what I what we were going to go through today and I was thinking about that one part how how magnificent and um, majestic Jesus must have been in the mind of John to be able to say that mm -hmm. yeah what, one of the things that stood out to me is the last verse or uh, 23 he said, I'm a, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. How did he know that? You know, I mean, he knew that was his message. And I thought about that too. Because uh, it's, it's kind of amazing, you know, because here he's out there talking to the world. It's, and these guys are asking, the authorities are asking, who are you? I'm just telling them. Well, and I'll go to it because... Because what it must have been for, let me get to the spot here before I start talking. Isaiah, four, Isaiah 43 is, is where it's coming from, is what it's referenced it to at least. 40 verse 3 says, Every valley, Isaiah 43, did I get that again? Yeah, 43. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God because John even said it himself I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said 
which was 600 years before this. Mm -hmm. So he to realize you are you were talked about 600 years prior. You know yeah. he's saying I am the voice. But don't you think you have those questions? Well, why me or? Oh yeah. You know, how'd you pick me? I mean, there's nothing in that scripture. I don't think it says, "Well, his name is John." He'll show here. You know, he knew the right. was his message. He, right, right. He really knew that. So somehow he encountered the Lord and knew oh, that yeah. the message. Well, later we'll see is this because he didn't know who he didn't know it was Jesus. Right. Until he, the the Lord told him, "The one who you see in the spirit of sin, you know, that's the one." And Jesus was his cousin. Yeah. yeah. When so, it starts out, this is the testimony of John. So he heard from God and spoke it, and that was his testimony. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's kind of cool. It's I like, always wonder how those guys heard. Yeah. It, did, did, it was an audible voice, or, you know, how did they get the, those words from the Lord? Yeah. I was just like, you know, from walking with God and just having that conversation every day with God and then God speaks to them and they, they just know that this is the voice of God talking to me and and sometimes go in faith. Yeah. But they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we do. See, that, yeah. That's what's yeah. very interesting because it's like it's a it was a different mechanism back then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the, I'm glad you pointed out this is the testimony of John. Then the then the Jews and they you know they they sent all the little gun the, all the big guns sent out the little guns to find out who they were dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Is this guy for real? Yeah. I want to know who he was because I think they were I think they were looking uh, because they just by their statement are you are you the prophet? What were they talking about? Because in Deuteronomy eighteen. 15 through 19 so it talks about the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me Moses is talking from among your own brothers he's talking into the future and so that prophet that they were constantly looking for one like Moses and uh, I think that that pointedly why they asked are you the prophet and he said no uh, it, so something that comes to mind about um, prophets. Uh, um, I remember, I don't know if you guys know Ken Peters from oh, yeah. Foursquare. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, he gave his testimony. It's on YouTube, actually. But um, where he talks about how he was a little kid and uh, the they said they would play a game in school. The kids would run over to him and say, let's play the game of let uh, let him tell us about ourselves. You know, it was it was like like a game for them. He had that gift. You know, it's like something he couldn't turn off. And back, back then, as a kid, yeah. So it's just could be the gift of God that's on a person when they're a prophet. You know, they just have that connection. And however it comes for them, you know, if they they just start speaking and it just starts rolling, you know. Um, and there's like an unction and they just speak and you know they uh, or maybe it's just a knowing I don't know but it's like there's there's like a gift and the Bible the Old Testament talks about um, the Holy Spirit descending on yeah. like the school of the prophets you know it was descend on them and then all these everybody would start prophesying so it was like the Holy Spirit would move on them at certain at certain times but I imagine with a, a person who is a prophet that that is much more of a regular thing. Yeah, I think back in the Old Testament, you mainly see the, it talks about like if spirit fell on David, it mm -hmm. fell on Saul. He prophesied, and, and so forth. Were theirs, theirs was in that in or upon, or ours is in, and theirs was upon at that time. It does say that John was filled with the spirit from his mother's womb. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I think he might have been the first one. Probably. <laughs> hmm. Think about it. 
He was he was the one that leaped with joy mm -hmm. in her womb when you know when the two sisters met up, Mary and Elizabeth. So he didn't want them obviously under the wrong impression of as to who he was or his important his importance because he even later says you know Jesus must increase I must dis decrease so he knew his place and and I think that one statement did Ray re mentioned that about him not even uh, worthy to unloose the strap of his sandal it talks about his humility and I'm wondering, you know, if you ask him, you know, who are you? You know, are you the Christ, Elijah the prophet? Were they really concerned about finding who the Christ was, or were they really concerned about protecting their own interests? I think they weren't, because Jesus was it. Yeah. And they didn't want nothing to do with him. Yeah, exactly. So I think you're right in that. I think... I think he, he was raising up, people were flocking to him and it was raising up interest and it was taken away from their mm -hmm. seats and their positions, yeah. you know. Yeah. Pride is, pride is a mean thing. Oh, yes. And, you know, 25 says, then why are you baptizing? I'm trying to think, was there any baptizing in the Old Testament? The only form of baptizing really they had was like washing, like Naaman washing and the... Uh, yeah, but that know. was a prophet's specific instruction. Right. But as general, I don't remember him baptizing. So it, to me, he's bringing in a whole new thing here that God showed him. Yeah, I think the same guy's reading the same and asking the same question. Why are they asking about him baptizing? You're not the Christ, you're not Elijah. I'm, I'm like, they yeah, so they, they, they know the Old Testament says yeah. something about it, but it's like... I think that's interesting because you know here you're you're a guy by yourself. Okay, repent. You get baptized. What? what? Well, that's not my Bible. <laughs> well, then they asked him, "Why are you baptizing?" So it's like yeah. they didn't say, "What? What are you doing?" Yeah. You know, why are you baptizing? So it must have been something. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. That's something worth checking into. There was mm -hmm. there was something I read about this question one time. I, I was curious about it myself and they there was a speculation or at least there in some of the studies that this uh, scholar did but they said that it could be something that was carried over from the captivity that um, it was a form of repentance that people would go out to a local body of water and it had to be fresh water and they would go out to a local body of water river or lake or something and they would do a washing and it was a it was a, a ceremonial form of repentance oh. um, and so it said it was something that was taken up during the the captivity in yeah. Babylon and stuff huh. yeah so yeah. it became so, kind of a ritual but it wasn't so maybe that's <laughs> kind of where he gets the this the idea of baptism yeah. you know as a form of repentance Let's see. But then he goes on and says that he, Jesus, is he baptized in the Holy Spirit. So he had some understanding of, of what that kind of the two, two different types of baptism. Yeah, it's interesting because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he 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 says that he baptizes with water, but among you stands one you don't know. Who, who, talked about later about baptizing in the Holy Spirit right yeah that's over in 33 uh, his instruction for sure we all know this was I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said then they asked him why are you baptizing if you are neither that's a good question right there what if you, why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet it's almost like they were expecting those those three to be one of those to be the, to be, to be the baptizing one mm -hmm. so it's something that was known back then that's the, I'm gonna check into that that's interesting I never thought about that yeah why would they expect one of those three to come to baptize 
I guess they figured they were the only qualified ones. You know, it was a, a standard. You know, priests yeah. have to do that. You know, yeah. somebody high up in, in the order of, of the church. Maybe because he didn't have much. Uh, he didn't have much at all. No, he didn't have any Anything. hierarchy. He didn't Nothing. have a church. He didn't have yeah. He was, he was the, the lowest of the low. But yeah. That's what God always liked. People like children and people yeah. that didn't have much. Feed the poor. You know. Well, he was in the wilderness too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll just a short break here. Okay. Um. So were they expecting Elijah to come back? Yeah, I think so. Well, he did come back for on the mount on the oh. Mount of Transfiguration. Yes. A lot of people say that's one of the two witnesses at in Revelation too. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Okay. And that you said that prophet was about. Uh, promise from Moses Moses in Deuteronomy 18 15 through 19 Moses says the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me from among your own brothers so from that point on they were looking for that person to come along mm -hmm. but you know I just I just read something in here which you think why they asked him because it says here it says there's no uh, getting around it. John the Baptist was unique. He wore odd clothes and ate strange food and preached an unusual m message to the Jordanians who went out to the wasteland to see him. But there's a guy, he comes out of the woods, you know, guy had a long beard and clothes ragged and, you yeah. know, yeah. they're thinking of some guy with a robe and everything else and looking to have an authority. This guy didn't know like he had authority. He looked like a bum, yeah. you know. Yeah, what's your degree? Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Probably people didn't see him hanging around town. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah. it was something new for yeah. sure. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's put in today's time. You seen Doctor Fauci sitting up there in the press conference looking like you know? Would you take him his authority? You know, no, we're not going to. You know, we want yeah. some guy to look like suit and tie and has mm -hmm. authority. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. But whatever he said appealed to the people where they their hearts were turned and wanted to be yeah be baptized yeah. yeah well it's like when the lord when the lord sends you out he he you know he sets the scene for you mm -hmm. he just don't say you know go try this out go try that out. but yeah. yeah so i mean the lord i'm sure had already worked on the hearts of the people yeah yeah because well, he had to prepare the way so he had to have a message or something about him that that resonated with their heart for them to turn so you can prepare the way so when Jesus came they got the fuller baptism yeah and obviously people were going out to him I mean whatever it was attracted right. attracted the attention of of all the priests and Levites you yeah, know? He, had to, he, had to, he had to have a large following if they were like what's going on over there yeah, yeah something was happening it's not yeah. two or three people yeah, yeah. it's a crowd well it's you know the anointing that's the, when yeah. God anoints mm -hmm. His word; it's alive, and, and that's, exactly. that's what gets people. I mean, you know, you, I know, you know, when Jesus talked, why did they sit there all day? Yeah, <laughs> it was alive, man. You think about now, John, his whole appearance that was a foolish thing, but the wise had no clue. Somebody said, "No, take the foolish thing to confound the wise." Right, right. But in those foolish things, he draws people to him. So it's all God. Yeah, yeah. So you mean, can you imagine? What, I mean, I could imagine what he would look like, and he'd go check this guy in the wilderness. He sounds funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. Also, it says in twenty-four. I thought that was interesting. He threw this in. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. The Sadducees didn't send anybody. I guess you know they didn't think anybody <laughs> showed up like this guy. <laughs> they didn't care as much. <laughs> yeah. We're not involved in that. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, we're not. We haven't seen it in this context so much as in the other gospels. I mean, his language was not. He didn't hold back. Brood of vipers, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he wasn't preaching a nice, a nice message. Seeker sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not not in his congregation. <laughs> Well, you know, when you speak the truth of the gospel, it's going to challenge people. Yeah, but I, I, I think I think 
the problem is is now with our with the day we live in we got to try to be too nice and we can't you have to you can't tell all the truth if you're going to be nice and if it's going to be a nice sweet message yeah there's if, if there's going to be any truth to it there's going to be some stuff people don't want to hear but that's the thing about the, the, the we don't have to change the word of god <clears throat> To make it effective, it's effective on its own. Right. Let, it, let it do the work. Just tell the people the truth, what the Word of God says. Right. It will do what it's what it needs to do. You want to do it in love. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's I think that's where a lot of people could go bad. Mm -hmm. is, is they have the right message, but the way they say it is not yeah. necessarily in love. You know. Right. Right. Yeah, and just tell them this is what the Word of God says. I know it's this situation that you're in, or you're telling me what's going on in your life. Word of God says this about that. And it's up to you to accept it or not accept it. Yeah. And I, I think you said something earlier, Jimmy, the fact that this has been what, 400 years since they would heard from God. So these people were like, well, this guy's talking about God, now they get straight with God. So there was a desire in their hearts. They were like, we need something. Yeah, this finally. guy's saying this is the way, you know. Finally. Yay, okay, let's go. <laughs> Give him that water. But then, like Tony said, you know, the, the, the all these religious people, they, they don't like this now. Right. Oh, it's no. taking who they are and right. it's bringing them yeah, down, right. you know. Right. Yeah, and then, I mean, plus, you no, know, you're trying to live by the Pharisees. Cause they added so much to the law, that right? you couldn't live up to it. Yeah, There's true. nobody living up to it. Not even them. Yeah. So when John comes in preaching the truth, where it's like, well, this is all I have to do. This is this is part of this makes it that much easier to get close to God. Then yeah, I don't hear that. Like I said people had a hard desire to get close to God, but going through the religious way of doing it, there's no way you can do it. Well, the thing about the Pharisees is that they were big on the stuff that can be observed from the outside, mm -hmm. yeah. paying their tithes and blowing their horns and. Pr looking all sad and dirty when they're fasting and mm -hmm. they liked that outward appearance but Jesus come along and says it ain't about that it's about what's what's inside of there yeah that's why he called the what be white 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 yeah that one well, that's <laughs> yeah. did you say that again <laughs> whitewash tunes <laughs> <laughs> Baptized with water, among you stands one you do not know. Uh, even he who comes after me, the strap who said, Oh, I'm not worthy to untie. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I found that interesting because the Jews were looking for a political leader. Mm -hmm. John says the one who's coming is the one who's coming for redemption the, uh, the lamb yeah. the, the innocent dying for the guilty you know he, would, he wasn't it wasn't John's point of view that Jesus was going to be coming as a reigning political king he saw, he saw him as the lamb of God yeah coming to take away the sin of the world. Again, that was pure revelation. I mean, he walks mm -hmm. up to a stranger and he says, oh, you're the lamb and take away. The you know, yeah. I mean, that's just, that's amazing. And the lamb, you know, obviously has a lot of symbology to Israel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at the Passover lamb, the Passover lamb and the animals that were, the animals that were sacrificed for even all the way back to Adam and Eve. Right. to cover their sin right. mm -hmm. um, and 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 also John says that let behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and they didn't say the sin of Israel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he has a bigger view on what Jesus is going to do maybe without even knowing but it's the sin of the world yeah he's all inclusive in that one and then, like we were already saying, though, did he know ahead of time, or did when Jesus showed up, was the revelation given to him at that time? And said, "Behold, this is 
and God's given to him at that time. I mean, can you imagine what that felt like? Yeah. I mean, have you ever met somebody and you go, oh, that, you know, that's who they are in, in Christ? Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing. And he did John, you know, the fullness of what he was even saying. Well, probably but, not, but I mean, the fact yeah, that he knew that much, yeah, yeah, yeah pretty yeah, doggone good. Yeah. <laughs> he knew enough to say it. Yeah. There was the event where John baptized Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, it comes a little later. Maybe, yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering, did he know that? Because it said that he, you see the dove descending on, you know, the spirit descending like a dove. So did John know that? He said, we hold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, right? Did he know that before or before that baptism event? Or Well, he goes on to say so, a little further. He says, I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptized with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And then he goes on to say, I did not know, but the one who sent me, sent me to baptize, going back to what we were talking about earlier, he was sent to baptize yeah. with water, said to me, you know, the Spirit. So this is all in the same context, I think. So he knew at this point, I think. But he had his doubt later. Remember when he sends his disciples right. to Jesus and says, you know, are, are you, you sure? the one? So <laughs> are he you had sure? a moment yeah. of doubt there. Yeah. I'm in truth now. You the guy because it's not turning out good for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he may have he may have just been and you know, as a prophet, prophets blurt out in prophetic prophetic utterance. You know, they just mm -hmm. You know, out of comes, and so he might have you and know when he saw him what they said. Yeah, the Larry, yeah, it's like <laughs> oh, okay. You know, it's like what that mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did I just say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about it, it was this cousin, he must like he might have said it like thought my cousin Jesus. I know him. Yeah. I'm sure God, that's the one you want. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Just being human about it. But you know, his mom could have told me that you jumped yeah. when you heard about his his birth. Yeah. You know, I mean she she could have talked to him about it. Yeah, you know, you could have. It, it, it's not you know. well, I don't remember either it's like when he was when he actually went out into the wilderness, how old was he? Was it after he got weaned? Oh, well, yeah, he he he's an adult at this point. Yeah, because he's an obviously an adult at this point. But yeah. how, how much time did he spend out in the wilderness? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I, play, I, I played mean, outside a lot. So yeah, and at, that time, <laughs> if you were, at that time, was he out there? Was God teaching him at that time when he was out in the wilderness, preparing him to prepare the way? Yeah. So we all have our wilderness experience where God is preparing us for our calling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of blanks in this story yeah. in there. Yeah. I think we can kind of maybe shut away something because it's human nature, the way God works with us, He doesn't really change a whole lot, so. It just takes us a while to get it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. It's interesting, too, that He says that He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is. He who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And that didn't even happen for another three years, mm -hmm. yeah. three and a half years, yeah. Yeah. whatever it was. But John says, I have seen, I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. So he had no doubt, even using that terminology, Son of God, he had no doubt at that point who Jesus was. So maybe in that time he's down the wilderness, God did say, hey, the son, my son's going to come to you. I will show you when he's there by this sign. Yeah. yeah this spirit descending yeah. from heaven like a dove and remained on him. Yeah. What are we meant by like a dove? I mean, was, did it something that resembled a dove? Or I think Was so. it a dove in a spiritual form? or? I kind of think it's like a... a cloud kind of dove shape but you know you know like that tongues of fire what's a tongue of fire yeah. look like yeah <laughs> i mean that sometimes that's a description we give it because it's the closest thing we can right. figure out right know? right you know so it, it it looked somewhat like a bird in, in the dove like whatever ezekiel saw he it was a wheel within a wheel. You yeah, know that's I mean? kind of trippy. Because he don't know how to explain it. You know? Well, yeah, how does he explain a drone or a jet? He didn't have anything like that yeah, in his life. Yeah, yeah good point. Yeah, I know what it looked like. 
Yeah, they come down. I mean, you kind of like think about it. Like, you see like a dove, I think a dove's flying the tree, like the flapping and stuff and feathers going different places and or they come down nice and gently. Who knows? Well, the doves are on land. They'll fly up and then they'll coast down. Huh? Well, and, and he's talking about the whole. But I mean, it's a, it's a gentle. Yeah. So that's kind of what I think of it when it says come down like a dove. But that's just <clears> my assumption. He is talking about the Holy Spirit because I mean it's a capital S there. It's mm. not a little. It's not like a spirit descended upon him. It's the spirit yeah. descended and remained on him. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's loaded. I've seen him more with. You know, as long as he was in the wilderness, he witnessed a lot of things that were just unexplainable. You know. Yeah, I mean. Like the, yeah. You know, exactly. And then just talking about experience, you know. I mean, being out there by yourself and seeing things, you know, there's only one person could have done this, created all this. Yeah, it's not like he had Facebook or yeah. email or anything, and a bunch of people said, "Yeah, we agree. That's good." <laughs> you know. Yeah, time to sit around, you know. It's like, we come down descending like a dove, you know. I, I, I was thinking when I was a small kid, uh, we used to lay on the sidewalk and watch clouds forming, you know. Oh, yeah. And, you know, oh, there's a bird, there's a horse, you know. Yeah, You yeah. know, it, it's, it's just something to think about, you know. Yeah. You know, he could have seen the clouds in the formation of a dove or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, and some of the stuff, <coughs> how do you describe it? Yeah. Even, even today, you see a cloud and I say, man, that's a cool-looking cloud. Well, how do you describe it? Well... Cloud, yeah. <laughs> you know, it looks kind of like a beach, but it kind of looks like a you know, somebody blew on the beach, but you know, it's got <laughs> well, it's like the, the beauty of a dove, they're mates for life. If one mate dies, the other one dies, really. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, huh. most of your birds, uh, that, like your geese, are that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're so they're so graceful as they float around, one will fall, the other, like. The guy or the girl, but I don't know which one's a male or yeah, female. Yeah, they might switch off. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. Huh. Well, the the, the uh, dove from Noah when he came back with the olive mm -hmm. branch in his mouth, or his beak feather. This could be, you know, an idea of what that represents as well. Mm -hmm. when the oh, spirit was that a was that a dove or is that a raven? I think the no, dove. The, the, the raven's yeah. the one that never came back. Yeah. Uh, he just yeah. kept going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but doves are also a, a sign of sacrifices that you bring. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you can you know, yes. that was one. That, I think that was the cheapest sacrifice. That was for the for you're really poor. You, yeah. You, you could use, use the dove. So it was, it was kind of the lowest uh, rung of sacrifices. But yeah. Something that keeps just kind of jumping out at me though it's too that there was in the rabbinical writings they say that there was they could see two different kinds of messiahs the one that was a conquering king and one that was a suffering servant and so john is saying that uh this is the lamb right so he's he's saying if you know whichever you're whatever you're looking for this is the lamb this is not the lion you know this is not the Lion of Judah coming back to free us from the Romans. This is the Lamb, and so the dove, so the Holy Spirit is sending on him is a gentle, you know, comes gently. It's not a hawk or something. It's like a, you know, it's a dove. So there's that imagery too that this is the the gentle Redeemer. Mm. Well, the the Jews are the ones that saw him as coming and saving them from the Romans and you know and and all the political one that would that was not from scripture he is their king <laughs> the same lamb is yeah. the king you know and yeah. so it's just how they're how they saw him coming they were expecting you know like all the zealots were expecting them to just come in and wipe them all out you know and set up his kingdom on earth with Jesus saw what happened when they tried to rush him and and take him as a king he slipped away he said this is not my plan you know yeah and it that's I'm, i'll do that the second time when i come back <laughs> yeah not the first <laughs>
But they, it's interesting that they asked when they asked them who you are because they asked Jesus. Jesus asked them the same question: Who, who do people are saying I am? And one of the answers was Elijah. The same thing that they were asking John. Mm -hmm. Well, and even earlier in this chapter, it says, you know, Jesus, Moses came with grace and truth. Jesus, I mean, Jesus came with grace and truth, and Moses came by the law. You know, so earlier in the chapter, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's comparing him to Moses in a sense. <clears throat> because he's bringing a new covenant, replacing Moses' covenant. A lot of similarities between him and Moses. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. leading the people from bondage, out of bondage, uh, the 40 days and 40 nights on that mountain. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other, other things too, if you, if you were to look at them all. I think they were led by the Spirit, and they were led by the Spirit. That's right, the fire and mm -hmm. the fire and the right. cloud. The cloud. Yeah. yeah. They went through the water like baptism, water baptism. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he says in Deuteronomy, the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me. So whatever they saw in Moses, they were looking for a duplicate later on somewhere. I guess maybe they're up for another journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. He says in 31, he says, I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. Which is interesting. God made sure that he didn't know Jesus, but he knew that was his purpose. Until it was revealed to him, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he obviously knew Jesus. Yeah. I don't think that's what he's talking about there. He's talking about knowing who Jesus is, really, yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. But he, don't you think he has some kind of inkling? He might have, but because he, he, didn't, he didn't have the same, you know, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He may have not seen that. Right. Because, I, I mean, mean obviously, that, Mary and Elizabeth must have talked sure and mary knew the mission of her, the child that she was going to be well she knew this much of the mission maybe yeah. yeah but still how much conversation that they must have had about that yeah i mean john might have heard something but maybe he just didn't know for sure until this point yeah yeah that's or what he's know, saying yes yeah. or he could have heard something about well, who jesus but mary heard from the angel about jesus and growing with jesus realized oh there's no way yeah. His mama said, because she's just being nice about his son, but I know him. That is, no. Well, like you were saying earlier, Jimmy, it, it probably came from within. He knew in his heart there's this something special about this individual. It just touches me. Yeah. I, I feel like I just want to bow down to him. Yeah, and I think it was a revelation. You know, they just, yeah. Phew, he goes, okay, I see the heavens open. Now I get to put a bigger picture. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I'm getting it. Yeah. <laughs> because if God gives us everything at once, we're messing up. We're gone. We're just messing up. Like, there's too much information. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus, I think. We can't take it all at once. We, no, we can't. He kind of builds, so we can go, oh, okay. You did all that, okay, you can do this too. Oh, okay. <laughs> you yeah. know, he builds. Well, he does end up saying, I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. That's, yeah, that's an awesome, awesome testimony because how many people. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to get everybody to do. <laughs> what is it that he saw, you know? You know, and it's so easy sometimes when you feel like you can't even follow in his footsteps, and then you beat yourself down, saying, I'm not worthy to even think oh, yeah, about it. all the time. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's, uh, that's where it's not fair to judge ourselves in that manner. we mm -hmm. got to look at ourselves in the light of what God says, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I constantly beat myself down. You and me both. I, I know what that's all about, <laughs> man. But I love this, this statement. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What's it say about you? 
Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he did it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it. yeah. another thing. It doesn't say sins, plural. It says sin. Uh, that's the big picture. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not. It's not. I don't know. The, to me, it's more. It, it means more seeing sin than sins. Because mm -hmm. sin as a whole, it's a whole, the covering the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The thing that corrupted the whole race. Yeah. Not not the things done individually yeah. by them. Yeah. But I mean, that's the reality is really part of it's receiving, understanding and receiving that. Because it really has nothing to do with that. Right. God sent him to do that. Yeah. And we have to, well, we don't have to, but it's our choice to agree and believe that. Or say, well, I got to work this out. And then we're basically saying, well, then Jesus didn't do his job. <laughs> Because like he came, your shirt replaced place to the to the Lord right there. Give blood, save lives. That's what Jesus said. Exactly that. When you say that, though, know, you come to the sin of the world. I think about when you say that. I think about okay, Adam and Eve. They get what, what do they do when they first sin? They give away the authority that God gave them over over the dominion of the earth, which all the other sin came from. And he came and took that back. Yeah, he had to, he took back the keys of death and hell. Yeah, yeah. So that one original sin, you wipe that clean. Now that's a revelation we're still getting. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's like what I taught a couple Sundays ago. You know, he was in the transgression. He was booted for guilt and iniquity. The chastisement needful to attain peace and well-being for us was upon him. He got beat up so we could have peace and well-being. Yeah. No, I don't deserve that. I didn't make. The, <laughs> I didn't set the rules up. I yeah. didn't do this. God did this. Yeah. Jesus came, and he takes away the sins of the world. Yeah. And the brain goes, not, nah, not, nah, not. Nah. <laughs> yeah, and, and just the, those words takes away. Yeah. yeah. I didn't say, I, mean, I smoked them over and made them all, made it better. No, he took a, you know, he yanked it out of there. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, yeah it's just, the brain doesn't get that. No. Neither uh, does I mean, the body. Because <laughs> <laughs> it keeps sitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it likes sitting. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's the whole thing about sin, you know, is that battle, because it's like Paul in Romans eight, you know, where you do the things you don't want to do, and you don't do the things you want to do, you know. It's just that battle we have with this heap of flesh we carry around. Yeah, and then the devil comes in and try to make us feel guilty about the natural battle we have with our flesh. Jesus says, no, I've covered all that. You have to work those things out, but that doesn't make you unrighteous. You just, that's just part of the process. And the devil comes in, well, you're still thinking that way. You're still doing those things. And yeah, I'm working this stuff out, but it's covered, so back off. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hit the road, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Don't come back no more. <laughs> well, like somebody said, you know, when, Jesus, when Satan comes and starts beating me up about my sin, see, Jesus took care of it. Go see him. Yeah, I mean, I thought, well, that makes sense because he he took care of it. I I couldn't deal with it. Yeah, I really can't deal with it. Well, and left to the left to my best, I couldn't even deal with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm the best. Nothing, nothing you can do. Period. Yeah. yeah. Something's kidding me about the Lamb of God is that Jesus died during the Passover, and that was all about. The lamb, yeah, you know, and the blood, a lot of symbology in that whole thing, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because the the what they sacrificed on the altar were bulls, and um, and then there was the scapegoat, and, you know, mm -hmm. the different ways of of covering sin or, or sending sin out of the camp or whatever. But the the lamb was about the Passover. So when John's talking about behold the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, <clears throat> it's referring to you know, biblically to the to Passover. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the 
the blood on the posts is what what covered kept you know as long as that was there covering them, death passed over them, and that's passed over. That's where they get mm-hmm. passed over from. And it's the sin of the world, like you said. It's the sin of the world, not just not just for Israel. Yeah, right. <laughs> which is which is. A, amazing thing to say at least at the beginning of this whole thing because it was still the focus still on Israel even through Jesus ministry you know his focus was on Israel but right at the beginning John says sin of the world thank God there was a it was I don't think it was a plan B I think it's still plan A but that we were included in it right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, because up to that point we were not, we were, we were nothing. Well, God promised Abraham his descendants would be as numerous as the sands on the shores of the sea, and so that's a lot of people, and we're included in that. Even though it wasn't directly said to us, but for as many as believe in Christ, we're included in that. So even before Jesus showed up in the flesh, He already planned to include us in that. Yeah. Yeah, God, God knew all along. Well, that will, I think that will cover us for for this time. But the next time we'll pick up where Jesus starts calling his disciples. We start running into some interesting characters. <laughs> <laughs> So if you come up with any insight with any of these guys that Jesus is going to be calling, who bring it with you. Who we identify with? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, that's... Yeah, like that's Earl or Hardy? Yeah. Yes. More like Curly. <laughs> <laughs> One of the Stooges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>